A decade later, we recognize my brother, the way he deserves to be recognized. I don't have much to say, but what's in this poem. So without further ado, this is Alonzo. It goes like this. Alonzo's birthday was the day before mine, so to make us feel special, our moms made us share a cake. <laughs> he was a kid who always used his fingers for forks and the frosting for Spider-Man face paint. Well, these days, forks are no challenge, but birthdays are kind of hard for Alonzo. See, he hasn't had one since 2011, courtesy of Denver police who snuffed the candles in his lungs with a taser shock for every year of his life that he breathed. They said that his strength was superhuman, like Spider-Man. An altercation with the zoo rent-a-cop got out of hand. They treated the animals there more humanely. This black man, taking his last breath yards away from African creatures in cages. And I know that there's a metaphor in there somewhere, but all I remember was his name on the news. Wondering why some disturbance in the force hadn't warned me. Wondering if the sound waves played tricks on the air. Wondering if he indeed just walked through heaven's gates. Why I wasn't the one greeting him there. See, eight years before, Denver police handcuffed me to a chair and beat me like I stole the tax dollars. I already paid them my parents' investments in me in their crosshairs. Every gas smile, every meal, every storybook lesson rests in the hands of Uncle Sam's new slave patrol weapons. But when the beast spit you out alive, bathed in the sweat from the moment you thought were the last before you died, who teaches you how to deal with regretting survival? When the, same at, when the shame at its second chance got you nearly suicidal, Alonzo, it should have been you writing this poem. Instead, I speak the ballad of another dead soldier. In this war, we never ask for old as history's pages. You and I, African creatures born into uniform, doing life in invisible cages. This is the ballad of another dead soldier. When the bullets kept going like our families had to, and ricocheting off the tombstones, I keep his taste buds in a graveyard that sings in my mouth like, like I can somehow speak their alternate futures into this one. Like, like, like somewhere magically right now, Trayvon Martin is a model. All six foot three of his now chiseled frame standing tall like the pride of his mama. Beard game on a hundred like his daddy, clean. Like Zimmerman's hands had he just followed directions. And somewhere, Oscar Grant is an actor alongside Michael B. Jordan. Never knowing that he's staring at his movie reflection in Fruitvale Station. It's just another train stop. And somewhere right now, George Floyd's lungs never pause for a moment of silence. His heart never called in black between the beats. Instead he screamed, I can't breathe, from laughter that Christmas when his, when his daughter got licorice stuck between her teeth. And somewhere, Sandra Bland just received her first non-profit grant. She and her fiance expect a child this November. All because a cop swallowed his pride in a Texas traffic stop in an incident he barely remembers. These are the lives and black lives matter. The haters never hear past the black. Just get triggered from being awakened from their raceless slumbers. Content with real destinies reduced to faceless numbers. And somewhere, Alonzo Ashley made it out of that zoo. And somewhere tragically, I made it on to the news. And this poem was never written. And you're not in these seats, just a candlelight vigil held in my tomb. But for reasons I cannot name, I survived. Here to eulogize the fallen and I must go on coping with the guilt of being alive. So won't you join me in singing their songs, our voices ringing out like the battle of Jericho, until the blue wall of silence falls, until the blue wall of silence falls, until the blue wall of silence falls. Rest in heaven, big homie. We love you. Right. Oh.